Hello game devs! Welcome to another episode in the Mark Cake series where we try and add features to the karting microgame. Today we're going to take the lobby from the previous episode a step further and implement a track select screen and restrict it so only the server can make the selection. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you need help with anything, please feel free to join the Discord, details in the description. Now let's begin! Now the first thing we want to do when we open our project is track down the main scene and we want to duplicate it and we're going to rename it to track 1 and track 2. Now this main scene is under carting, under scenes and then we've got our main scene here so we're going to copy and paste it. So I'll just press Control c Control v and so now we're going to have this main scene 1 which is the second one and I'm going to press F2 to rename it and this is going to be track 1. And this one, I'm going to press F2, and I'm make, going to make this track 2. Now I'm going to open up track 2, and we're going to change it a bit, so there's a little bit of character to it. So the first thing we'll do to make it a bit different is we're going to open up this environment game object, and we're going to disable basically everything. And so now we're left with this. Now what I might do with this sun is I might increase the size of it a bit, and that'll look quite interesting from the gamer's point of view. Bring it down a little bit. And there we go. Now next we want to make sure that this scene is included in the build settings. So we'll click on File, Build Settings. And we'll click on Add Open Scenes. And then we're just going to drag this up to make it nice and neat. Now the next thing we need to do is take a screenshot of this track so we can pick it in the Track Select screen. So what I like to do is click on these dots. Go to Overlays, pick View Options. And click on grid and snap as well. So I want to get rid of these annoying grids. So I click on this button and I want to get rid of these gizmos and tools. So I'll click on this button. And now I, if I zoom out, so if I hold right click and use S on my keyboard, I can zoom out a bit. And then I'm going to position it where I want it. Click on this hand tool. And then I'm going to use Windows Shift S and that's going to do a screenshot function and I'm just going to grab that and then I can open up MS Paint change the size to 1 paste that in and now we can save that and to do that we'll click on file save as PNG now we need to go to where our project is which is under unity projects new cutting for video assets and we're going to make a new folder and call it images. And because this is a screenshot of our track 2, I'm going to call this track 2. Now while we're doing these screenshots, we'll do the same thing with track 1. So I'm going to save this scene. I'm going to open track 1. And that's already a very good position. So I'm just going to press Windows Shift S on my keyboard. I'll do another screenshot. Open up MS Paint again. Control V to paste, file, save as PNG, and we'll call this track one. And that's all done. Now that we've saved these two screenshots into the assets folder, we need to convert them into sprites. So let's go to our project. So we'll go to assets, images, we'll select the first one first, and we just need to change this texture type to sprite, 2D and UI. We click out, press apply, and we do the same for the other one. And that's all done. Now the next scene we need to make is a track select screen. So I'm going to click on file, new scene. I'll make it empty, go create, and I'll go file, save as, and we'll go to our assets folder under carting and scenes, just where the other ones are, and I'll call it track select. Now this scene's really basic. The first thing it needs is a camera, so I'm going to right click and click on camera. The next thing I need to create is a UI, so I'm going to right click and click on UI and I'm going to start by making a canvas and I'm just going to call this UI. Now there's a few basic things I need to configure with this canvas, so I need to click on the UI and then under canvas I need to change the render mode to screen space camera. I need to change the render camera to the camera that we've just created, so I'll just drag and drop that in there. Under the canvas scaler, I need to set the UI scale 
to the screen size, scale the screen size. And then next I want to change the screen match mode to match the width or height, which is already set. And then I'll match it to 0 0.5. Now I need to create three separate game objects in the UI. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click on UI. I'm going to go to create a new UI text. And this text is going to say, select your track. Now I don't really like the way that it's going onto a new line. So I need to make sure that this is selected. And then I need to increase the width a bit. So I'll make it 500 and that'll help it out a bit. Now, the next thing we want to make are some buttons to select our tracks. So we're going to go back to our UI. We're going to right click on it, click on UI and go to button. So this is going to be the track one select. Now the way it's come out is it's got this text here. We don't want that. We want to click on our track one and we want to replace this sprite with the track one sprite that we made earlier. You can see the size is a bit squashed. So we're going to make this a bit more square like. So we'll make it 300 by 300. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for the second track. So we'll right click on UI. We'll create a UI button, call it track two. And then we're going to drop that down, delete the text in there. And we're going to go back into here and we're going to replace this UI sprite with track two that we made earlier. And then we're going to set this width and height to 300 by 300 again. Now we're just going to spend a little bit of time repositioning them so that they're separated. So I'm going to drag track one out a little bit and then track two out a little bit. This doesn't need to be too precise just for this demonstration. So I'm not going to be too fussy. So I'm going to bring up the text a bit too. And I'll just move these around until I'm reasonably happy with it. Okay, now we need to write a script so that when the host clicks on the track, it's going to actually load the scene. So what we'll do is we'll click on track one, scroll down, and we'll add a new component. And we're going to call this script load track. Click new script. Create an add. And now we'll open our new script by double clicking on it. Now this new script is very simple. So the first thing we need to do is we need to implement mirror. So I'm going to go at the top, type in using mirror. Now we need to change this to a network behavior. And now we need to create a, uh, a public scene string. So we're going to call this uh, scene public string track scene. And by doing this, that's going to make it so in the inspector, you can actually pick a scene and it'll know what that is. Now we need to make a function. So we don't actually need any of these. We're going to go uh, public void load track scene. Now we're going to say that if it's the server, then we want to write a message to the screen to say you loaded track and we want the track scene just so we've got a bit of uh, feedback in the debugging and then we're actually going to load the scene so we're going to go network manager dot singleton dot server change scene and then we want to load this track scene that we pick in the inspector. And we'll just close that off. And that's it. I'm going to save it. Now we're going to go back to our project. And under track one, if we go down to the button component, there is an on click function. So we're going to add one. So this will happen every time you click on this track one button. I'll make it editor and runtime and I'll change the context to track one. So I can do that by dragging and dropping it in here. And then for the function, I'll click on load track, which was our script that we just made. And we want it to trigger that function that we just made, which was load track scene. 
And for that load track script that we made, we want to set that track scene to the scene one, the track one. And so we're going to find that in here. So we'll go to Karting Scenes, Track 1, and we'll assign it there. And that should be all done for Track 1. We're going to do the same thing for Track 2. We'll go to Track 2. We'll do it the other way this time, where we will add the, the script. We're going to add that Track Scene in here. So we're going to add Track 2. And this time we're going to go to that on-click uh, trigger under the button. We're going to add another one, which will be the exact same thing. So I'll drag and drop track two in. And then we're going to make it load track and then load track scene. Now, one thing I forgot to do before was add the track select to the build settings. So we're going to open that back up, go to file, build settings, add the open scene, and we'll drag this back into the middle. Now we need to go back to our intro menu and we need to fix up some settings on the network room manager. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna set this online scene to the intro menu as well. And then down in the gameplay scene, we wanna set that to the track select scene and then we're gonna save that. Now at this point in the tutorial, I was having a lot of trouble compiling the project. So all I did was I went back into the track select scene, which I'm in right now. I went to file, save as, I went back into Karting, Scenes, and I resaved the uh, Track Select. Clicked mm -hmm. on Save, yes. And then I went back into each of these Track Game objects and I reassigned these Track 1 and Track 2 uh, variables. So I'll do that again. Track 2, drag Track 2 in, then save it again. And now I'm able to build and run. Now that that's running, I'm going to go into the Assets folder. I'm going to go to where my compiled folder is. I'm going to run three more instances, so I'll press Enter three times. Now we're just going to run a host on one of them, we'll click on client on each of the rest, and then press ready on them. When they're all ready, it'll automatically get to the track select screen, and you'll see that the server's over here. So if I click on the tracks on any of the clients, it's not going to work, but if I click on one on the server, it'll automatically spawn them all in. It's exactly what we want. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, reach out to me in the comments below or on the Discord. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.